Hello everybody and thank you for joining. My name is Michael and I work with the NCC group as an associate director within the tactical cybersecurity team. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the trusted platform module, especially when it comes to the ATM contact. Initially, I would like to go through some of the points that make up the trusted platform module. So it is marketed as and works as a microcontroller chip that will store artifacts securely in hardware that can be passwords certificates it could be encryption keys etc it also facilitates what we call strong authentication because separating the actual secrets down to hardware level instead of having it running in software or memory directly brings about an added security layer where you cannot tamper with the different keys, values, and so on. It, it facilitates uh, measurements that will allow you to verify platform integrity, operating system integrity, so on and so forth, even attestation from in an application layer. Now, it also provides interoperability layer from applications running within a platform. Now, that is, in a nutshell, the TPM, or Trusted Platform Module. When you look at how the internals of this work and why it relates very well to always on machines such as ATMs, the cryptographic elements which are stored on hardware level basically helps defend against software attacks. So if you compromise the kernel, if you compromise applications, reaching these artifacts is going to be very difficult if set up correctly. Now, and it also enables blocking or even access restriction to these elements so that you cannot have an unauthenticated or unauthorized application or user accessing these. Mind you, the TPM is a chip on the motherboard with its own bus uh, speaking directly with the CPU. Uh, removing any kind of batteries or power to this will actually invalidate those artifacts stored there, thereby making it extremely difficult to do offline attacks or physical attacks. It also enables configuration change detection. So this is the verification and attestation part. And that will give you an early warning or even the ability to block when a malicious application is running or trying to execute on your device. And most importantly, integrity control. Now this integrity control can be used not only to verify the boot process of a operating system or the storage of encryption keys for your hard drives, but it can also be used by applications themselves programmed directly with policies on how to access the TPM, thereby opening up the opportunity and the potential to make sure that the actual applications running on the device, on the platform, well, they are intact and they are who they say they are without having been tampered with. There is some hardening, of course, when it comes to ATMs, which is required by the administrators of these machines or the vendors of the software. But done right, and you have a very, very strong and powerful module that will prevent not only software attacks, but also make physical attacks pretty much um, impractical. They will not work because trying to access these features will either trigger the alerts that you need or it will actually just invalidate all the artifacts that has been put into the TPM. It produces a greatly enhanced posture, a greatly enhanced security posture of the operating system itself, but also it can be used to generate this posture for the transactions and the ATM software running. Now, moving on with that, we can, we can have a look at some of the examples. The secure boot is a pretty straightforward example that is widely in use today. You have the platform integrity uh, and the integrity of the configuration being verified by the TPM. You have anti-tampering because if you do hard drive encryption using BitLocker, which is a technology that can use a TPM, well, you can simply not, you cannot access the hard drive itself. You cannot access the data. You cannot go in, pull out the hard drive, put it into another machine, change about 
executables with another operating system. This is simply not feasible. And breaking it uh, from an offline perspective is practically impossible. Now, it also enables the trusted environment controls uh, using the UEFI uh, in combination with the TPM, thus securing that nobody is tampering with the actual boot sequence of the operating system as you are starting your computer. It even goes down to the verification of uh, which type of CPU are bound to this and can this all run in unison, thereby achieving proper system authentication and authorization. Further, some of the examples that the TPM is growing into is application or virtualization challenge response, which will help you. This is how we establish who is who. You, you know this from the old HTTPS or the SSL, where you have a challenge response. A server will verify that I am indeed the server using asymmetric keys. Now you can do the same from a client side, and this can be used directly on the TPM, thereby providing a potential for authenticating and verifying the integrity of applications. You have virtualization pass-through, so you can greatly enhance your security by using all of these technologies in unison and in combination. When we move on, there are attacks uh, on the hardware level that are applicable but if we look at this from an ATM perspective, they become impractical because even though some have managed to latch on to the bus of the TPM, snoop the, the keys being moved around, this will require physical access and physical access to an ATM for a prolonged period of time. You will not just simply go there and in one second you will have it from the TPM. Further, you will have to reboot the entire machine. Now, all the bells and whistles are already starting to chime in the administrative part of this ATM. People will know that this ATM went offline. And when you look at the perpetrator standing there physically, well, this person will be bringing FPGAs, have wires, and it will look extremely odd the way this technician is now all of a sudden working with the ATM. And the time required for this person to obtain the keys to decrypt a hard drive, for instance, is going to be enough time to be detected, thereby making it very impractical. The risk to this person doing this is going to be so high that they're going to seek other venues. Now, these types of attacks that are on hardware level, they also have a high complexity. Um, of course, until they are made practical, we have other types of attacks that can be latched onto the hardware after the TPM has been used to verify. However, going back to the original point, this is time requiring and requires physical access to the ATM. This will notify pretty much everybody that something is going on which is not supposed to take place. So the TPM, in a quick perspective for the ATM, it offers proper hard drive encryption. It offers strong o operating system, I was gonna say OS, but operating system verification and anti-tampering. It also offers the ability to verify transactions that needs to be secured. And this will, well, it has to be implemented considering the old ways of providing ATM security. This deals with both offline and software attacks. In the essence, the TPM methodology and technology, from my perspective as a penetration tester, is a no-brainer. There is no 100% there, there no security, but the TPM is a pivotal technology in raising the security posture of all of these points that I've already mentioned. We have seen this over and over again. And with BitLocker being one of the most prime examples of being pretty much impossible to break unless you latch on after, well, there you go. This will not work. You will simply and effectively just raise the security posture enormously by using the TPM. Thank you for listening in, guys, and stay safe.
Thank you, Michael. Um, great presentation. Um, so my name is Aravinda Korala. I'm the CEO of Cal. I'm going to focus uh, more on TPMs uh, to secure ATMs um, because, of course, TPMs are a generic uh, PC uh, solution. And uh, the strange thing is that our uh, ATM industry doesn't seem to use it as much as we should be. So let's just start a little bit with ATMs. ATMs are, of course, uh, not just about cash dispensing. They are a gateway to a range of bank services. Uh, not only, of course, do ATMs have lots of cash inside, they are also uh, the means by which you can move and transfer funds. So that means that the risk if an ATM gets attacked is not just about the cash inside the safe, it is also what transfers and what movements might be initiated using the ATM, because obviously the ATM is connected to an ATM host, as you can see in the picture, and then the ATM can instruct the host to do things. Obviously, there are certain rules around what it can do, but you can see that it is clear that ATMs need to be properly secured. Now, TPMs are the root of all security on PC systems and have been designed and been around for quite a long time. The TPM uh, design started uh, as early as 1999. Uh, every PC or laptop that you can buy today has a TPM inside. Um, this uh, presentation is a short summary of a white paper that Cal has written with help from Michael from NCC as well. And it's called TPMs are the root of all security published this month, um, available on our website and also from the ATMIA uh, white papers area. So let's talk a little bit about what does uh, root of all trust means. Firstly, uh, as Michael mentioned, TPMs are a secure key vault. Uh, one of the things about encryption is that you need to have keys to encrypt and the root key, the key right at the beginning of a keychain needs to be secure, uh, securely stored because it has to be in the clear. It can't be also encrypted because if you encrypt it, then you need another key to decrypt it. So at the beginning of a chain of uh, keys, there is a clear key. Now, the most important thing to be aware is that these clear keys cannot be stored on the hard disk because then if somebody uh, attacks the hard disk, uh, that key is available. And there is just no known way of securing a key in the clear on a hard disk. There is no known way of doing that. Um, the TPM is the place where those keys are therefore stored. But of course, if you store keys on a TPM, the next problem you have is, well, whom are you going to give access to that key? If uh, software on the ATM says, please, can I have the key? Are you going to hand over the key? Uh, you can't do that unless you know that the software is secure in itself. And this is where the TPM comes in again. And it has something called the core root of trust measurement, a CRTM, an important term. It means that from the boot process, right from the very first power on um, switch being uh, enabled, it measures the boot process to ensure that there has been no change in any of the software that is in the BIOS, the UFE, uh, the bootloaders in Windows and so on. And the TPM helps to do that. And there is no other way. Uh, there is no other way of doing that. So very simply, if you do not have a TPM, you do not know that that software has not been attacked. Now, obviously, if a, T a ATM doesn't have a TPM, then you cannot secure it in the way that I'm saying. And there is no known way of securing it properly cri cryptographically where you have absolute certainty that the software hasn't been tampered with. It is just impossible uh, to stop malware infecting um, the, the early boot process if you do not have a TPM. So um, consider those ATMs that do have TPMs. Um, we know that there are banks that have ATMs that have TPMs that are not using it. Well, we've got to be using it. If you have an ATM that doesn't have a TPM, well, you've got to be putting those TPMs in because it just makes no sense. The TPM itself costs almost nothing. Um, they're less than a dollar in volume. 
So really, um, it, it is crazy not to have TPMs uh, to secure ATMs. So TPMs secure the Windows startup process um, up to the point where Windows needs to start. Uh, but of course, Windows, uh, the executables are on the hard disk and those executables uh, must be encrypted because obviously drive encryption is a critical part of securing ATMs. The TPM is very important in doing that because the initial key that is needed uh, to protect the TPM, sorry, protect BitLocker uh, is in the TPM. And it is held in a very special uh, methodology called sealing, which means that the key can be made available to BitLocker only if everything else up to that point has been con confirmed to have not been modified, not been tampered with. If uh, any bit of software has been tampered with, the key becomes unavailable and the ATM won't boot, which makes it very secure. Now, Windows also has another trick called uh, um, application control, which is whitelisting. Um, we can always recommend the Windows whitelisting, but there are third party solutions as well. Again, uh, keys and uh, security and authentication needed around all of that um, needs to be stored in the TPM. And that is how Windows does it. And third party uh, tools uh, would be more secure if they stored everything on the TPM. So the boot sequence and the application software can only be secured from the beginning to the end. Uh, if there is a TPM. Um, this white paper was um, uh, inspired uh, by a book that was written by the TCG. TCG is a trusted computing group, uh, the group that designed um, the TPM, which consists of all the big companies, IBM, uh, Microsoft, uh, Intel, etc. And they, they wrote this fabulous book, which is um, quite a challenge to read. Um, one of the things we've done is to try to kind of understand that a little bit and most importantly to mention that TPMs are not just about securing the boot sequence. It is also about securing the complete ATM. Now, on the next slide, I will show you what I mean. Um, we've, uh, with permission from the authors of the book, I have reproduced here uh, 45 of the 53 use cases that they talk about. Uh, this is just to give you an idea of um, the things that a TPM can do. It is about potentially securing the complete ATM network, not just the ATM itself, but the complete network. Now, there are lots of important ideas here in the uh, use cases. Uh, we would really like that the ATM uh, community starts thinking about these things and coming up with uh, use cases that are specific to uh, ATMs. Uh, there is a lot here. Uh, I, I won't go through that at this stage, but uh, the most important thing that I wanted to kind of achieve from this presentation and from the white paper that we have published is that we start that conversation about how TPMs are the root of all trust on, on PC networks. And it also is the case for ATMs because there is no other way of securing ATMs cryptographically in the way that TPMs allow you to do that. Now, just as an example, um, I, I know that this slide uh, is not necessarily readable, but this is just to give you a high level view. TPMs allow the network to be fully secured as well. Here you see uh, some boxes at the bottom, ATMs at the bottom, uh, ATM terminal handler, the host in the middle, and all the backend uh, systems such as uh, um, uh, various web services, core banking, etc. Now imagine the situation. Imagine the scenario where each one of those boxes had a TPM inside. If you had that, then it would mean that all of the connections will, can be cryptographically secured. In other words, when the ATM speaks to the terminal handler, the terminal handler would know that A, the ATM is secured, B, that none of the software has been tampered with, and vice versa. The ATM would know that about the terminal handler. If the terminal handler had a TPM inside, everything inside that terminal handler would be secured too. And similarly, when the terminal handler talks to a web server, they would know that both systems were secured all the way, every bit and byte of uh, each of the executables inside every single box in that picture 
would be known to have been cryptographically secured, unmodified, and unchanged. Similarly, this technology can be used to secure uh, the devices on the ATM as well. So the ATM devices, such as the card reader, the, uh, uh, the pin pad, the, the cash dispenser, as we know, uh, they are connected by USB and can be attacked. And there are well-known black box attacks. Um, I won't dwell on why those things have happened in the past. However, provided that there is a hardware secure element inside each of those devices, then those USB connections could be cryptographically secured. And we think that there needs to be a big discussion in the ATM community about how we do that. The XFS4 IoT committee, which is a committee that Cal is part of, is, uh, has started that discussion. We invite people from the ATM community to join us in making sure that the specification uh, goes in the right direction and that we can secure um, all of the connections um, inside an ATM as well as outside an ATM. Thank you very much. Um, the white paper uh, has a lot more detail than this short presentation. Uh, it is on Cal's website now. Um, and of course, it is also published uh, as a white paper uh, in the ATMIA's uh, white papers section. Thank you all. Michael, uh, your thoughts then on TPMs, because you know the amazing thing is there are lots of AT ATMs that don't have TPMs at all, which seems to me uh, to be very crazy. And of course, there are ATMs that do have TPMs that are not properly deployed. You know, uh, it, it must be just not the right thing to do, right? Well, um, I have uh, performed a lot of penetration tests also on ATMs. Um, first and foremost, every time I encounter a ATM that does not have a TPM and an encrypted hard drive, I have one, period. Uh, second, I have physical access. All I need to do is simply snatch out the hard drive and get the key uh, from the hard drive because it is stored cl clear text there. You may have products that will say, oh, we can, we can, we can generate the key using algorithms and all sorts of faff and you know um, security through obscurity. But that's just uh, until a proficient uh, reverse engineer will sit himself down and actually spend time just figuring out what's going on. Um, so seeing a TPM uh, is the first uh, indication that I will have to work. I will have to actually work when testing this ATM. Now, of course, there's a lot of things around it that can that I might be able to bypass because of poor setup or hardening. That's a different matter. But the entire secure boot process of, of attacking the operating system, gaining that administrative right, even tampering with the with the system, well, I will really have to work. Um, so I think the TPMs are not they're not just critical to the PC and the security and, and the way we store cryptographic secrets or use verification or attestation. It is imperative that ATMs today man up and actually use the technology that is presented to them. Uh, it is, I, I don't understand why this is not the case. Yep, thank you, Michael. And the, the other thing that surprises me is that sometimes people kind of say, well, you don't need to do it that way and you don't need keys and I can generate keys. I mean, you know, that's just, you know, we kind of talk about that in that white paper a little bit. Just uh, not real, is it? I mean, nobody's invented an encryption system that doesn't need keys. That would be impossible. That, that, that cannot happen. Uh, uh, crypt cryptography works very simply by having a mathematical way of, of changing, morphing something into another value. You need, you need an offset. You can have either a password, you can have a, a key and an initialization vector, all of these things. But it has to be reversible as well. And uh, I, you mentioned this in your presentation. This key has to be in plain. Somehow, somewhere, this has to be stored. Of course, then we have uh, another technology which we call the asymmetric uh, encryption where you have a public key, private key. Well, here's the thing. The private key is still in plain text on the host who has it. So, you know, as long as if I get that, oh, you're pretty much done with. So in, in, in essence, the TPM is just a great way to, to really store your secrets and if used correctly, it is extremely secure. Oh.